What's up everybody, it's Rafi from Zurb, and we got something really special for you this week. A lot of people have been asking about panini. How to use it, what goes into it, and how to get the most out of it. Now, we're not chefs here, and we're not talking about a tasty sandwich. We're talking about panini, which is our handlebars templing engine. So Zurb delivers over 100 client projects every year, and for the last 19 years, we've developed a lot of best practices and tools around optimizing that workflow. And part of that is the Zurb Stack. The Zurb Stack is our project template that we've been using here at Zurb for a while, and in Foundation 6, we open sourced it so everybody else can use it. It's built on Gulp and Node, and it includes a really important piece, which is called Panini. So Panini is our handlebars templating engine. It allows you to reuse components over multiple pages, reuse layouts, create some data, and a lot of other things that get you closer to a dynamic website, but still in a static sense. So Panini is really gonna help you optimize your workflow, reduce mistakes, and save time. So let's take a look at some of the main components. So I wanna show you guys a few ways to get Panini working on your computer. So a couple ways to get started would be through the Foundation CLI. So I, if I have the Foundation CLI installed, I can run Foundation New. And this is gonna start the CLI. So if I choose Foundation for Sites, I name my project. And then I'll choose the Zurb template, which is the Zurb stack. And this includes Panini. So if I hit enter, it'll start building me that project. Another way to install it is from the Zurb stack itself. You can go to the uh, github.com slash Zurb slash foundation dash Zurb template repository. And then there's installation instructions here. So you want to get a, a version of Node installed on your machine, and uh, you'll also need Git. So you can manually install it by using this command here, git clone, just basically copy this, and then instead of project name, name it whatever your project is. CD into that project, and then run npm install and bower install. And once you do that, you'll be set to go with the Zurb stack. You can also use this for foundation for email. So the GitHub URL for that is github.com slash Zurb slash foundation dash emails template. And same, same installation instructions. You don't need Git for this one, but otherwise uh, you'll need Node. And then you can use this Git clone uh, address here to manually install it. And you can also run Panini standalone. So if you want to just grab Panini and add it to your own gulp process, you could definitely do that. There is some instructions here on adding it to your own gulp build, how to watch it, and then some basic documentation on how to use it. So there's quite a few ways to get started and one definitely that works for you. So Definitely check those out. Before we go any further, I got a great opportunity for you. If you want to learn Foundation in and out, and you want to get a deep dive on Panini, the Zurb stack, how to modify it, using SAS, writing SAS, Flexbox, and a lot of the JavaScript or the advanced JavaScript in Foundation, then the advanced Foundation class is for you. The next one is on February 21st. It's a great time. There's four hours of training. You get to ask questions directly from the instructors and get your questions answered. You'll get a copy of all the slides and demos that we go through. So it's really the best place to learn really fast. So check that out. That is February 21st and I'll add the link below. All right, so before we jump right into Panini, let's cover a quick introduction on the Zurb stack. So the Zurb stack is built on Node. Node is a JavaScript runtime engine that is used client-side or server-side. And a lot of the biggest companies in the world use it, like Samsung, eBay, and Facebook. So it's really amazing, and we use it for our CLI and also packaging up all our dependencies. 
So Node comes with the Node Package Manager, which is NPM. And we use that to package up all our dependencies and keep them up to date. And Gulp is being used as our task runner. Gulp is a JavaScript task runner that basically does all these automated things for us, like compiling SAS and auto prefixer, and then optimizing our project, uh, compressing images, things like that. So there's a lot of amazing things happening there. The quick overview is that the Zurb stack is something that we've been using here at Zurb for quite a while. In Foundation 6, we decided to build it on Gulp instead of Grunt, and then also open source it so everybody in the community can use it. It's a really powerful set of tools, and if you don't have a workflow already, or if your company needs a better workflow for all your employees, then the Zurb stack might be the right thing for you. It's something that's uh, really simple to get going. Uh, the command line interface that we've created will get you started really fast, and then you can build on top of that with any of the Gulp plugins. So in the stack, of course, uh, it's built on Node, like we said, using Gulp as a task runner. NPM is the package manager. We're also using Bower as a front-end package manager for things like jQuery, Motion UI, and Foundation. And then Panini is what's processing the handlebars templates. So Panini is what we're here to talk about, so let's jump right into that. So the reason Panini is named Panini is not because we're pressing tasty sandwiches, it's because it's a flat file compiler. So it's going to take your HTML partials, so these are like small repeatable snippets of code, things like your navigation, your footer, could be a sidebar, other things like that and it's compiling them into one flattened page with your layout. So things like your, your head and your closing body tags and any of the scripts that you're running inside of each page. So what this does is allows you to separate out your layouts, your pages, and keep your code really nice, neat, and simple. And it's a little bit different than a static site generator there's like Assemble and uh, Middleman out there, and those are really big, powerful tools for doing this. Uh, but what Panini comes with is a more focused feature set. It's things that you're gonna use most commonly to build out your sites. And the foundation marketing site is built on the uh, Panini set of tools so and the Zurb stack. So it's something that we use in production all the time. So Panini has a concept of a layout. So a layout is what's going to contain your common page elements like your head tag and your closing body tag and all of the scripts that go on every page. Now, if you are going to use the same navigation on every single page, that would also probably live in your layout. And we'll show you later how that would actually look. It also has a concept of partials. So partials are small pieces of HTML. So repeatable pieces that you're gonna use over and over in different pages or in layouts. You can even use partials inside of partials. There's also a lot of helpers that will help you make your project a little bit more dynamic than a static site. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to switch the active class on different navigation elements depending on the page that it's on, well, Panini will help you do that and we'll show you an example of that in a later lesson. And of course, you can also use data with Panini. So this will give you kind of a bridge towards a more dynamic site, but you don't need to carry a full database. So data will let you use JSON or YAML files and you can inject data into your components. So pages are really important concepts. You're gonna use them the most. They're very easy concept to understand that you have a layout. And again, the layout is where your head and closing body tags are and then all your scripts. So those are gonna be represented here in the green box where it's wrapped around each page. And then your page is just the content itself. So you don't need to go and copy and paste the head and closing body tags onto every single page all the pages that you create get injected into the layout. So that's really nice. Now we're gonna hop over to some real 
code examples and show you around. All right, so we have a Zurb stack project here and I'm just gonna show you around a little bit so you kind of get a feel for what's happening. Now, one thing I wanna mention about Panini and Zurb stack is that anybody can use this. Even if you not sure what handlebars are or how to use them, you can use this and I'm gonna show you how. And this is definitely something that's gonna up your workflow and your game. And the nice thing is this could be used in any system. So let's take a look at layouts. So if we open up the layouts folder, you're gonna find a default layout. So this comes with the Zurb stack. This is your default layout. So this has your HTML5 doc type, your HTML tag, your head, and then your closing body tag and the JavaScript. So you'll see that there is a body include here. So this is a handlebar include. So this is the way you would normally call a partial. Now in this case, this is being used to be the injection point for all your pages. So the body include will inject all your pages here. So it's using this handlebar syntax. So we have two curly brackets, a greater than sign, and then the name of the partial. In this case, body refers to pages. So if we hop over to pages, we have a few pages in here and your index.html, this could act as your home page or your main landing page. And this will be injected into the default layout here. And so will this other page and so will this other page. So every time you're rendering a page, it's gonna wrap it in this layout. So that's really nice. Now you notice that this index page is not referring to any particular layout, so it will default to the default template. Now you can actually create new layouts, which I'll show you in a later lesson and how to link those layouts up in your pages. So you can create as many pages as you want here. You can create folders and subfolders of pages. It's up to you how you organize them. We'll hop over to the partials folder. This is where all your HTML partials live. Now I've already added some in here and I've created some specific folders to keep them organized. So we have a set of cards here that we're creating. And inside of that, we have our partials. A partial is just an HTML page. So you'll see that it just has a name of the partial and then the file extension of .html. So if we look at one of these, you can see that a partial is a small snippet of code. So this is one card that we're creating. So this might be a reusable pattern that we use over and over and over again. So you can use folders, subfolders in your partials, but the main takeaway here is that your HTML partials are just small snippets of HTML that we can now go inject onto our pages. So we could use that on one of our pages. For example, if we wanted to inject a partial, it's using this syntax. So two curly brackets, a greater than sign, and then the name of the partial. You don't need the file extension. It already is expecting an HTML page. It also does work with uh, .hbs or handlebars. And then we also have a data folder. So right now the data folder is empty. But if we add some data, we can add a YAML folder or JSON file. And either way, we can use this to inject some data into our partials. So there's a lot that we could do with this and we'll show you more in a later lesson. Right on, so now you have all the ingredients to make a tasty panini. And next week, we're gonna start cooking with layouts, pages, and partials. So we put out great lessons every week. I hope you guys love them. If you don't wanna miss the next one, make sure you hit subscribe up above so that way the Yeti can buy his girlfriend some flowers for Valentine's Day. This is really important. So thanks everybody. We'll see you next week where we'll be pressing some paninis.